everybody welcome back my name is Alison the online piano and the online violin tutor I know this is a strange video because you can't see me but I am actually here um, um, I'm just about to change the strings uh, an entire set of strings from my violin and before I do that I thought um, I might just see if I can try and set the camera up and um, you can just see exactly how I change my strings and how I go from you know take, taking a whole set of strings off to putting a brand new set of strings on and then tuning it up and um, I'll kind of talk you through it um, I'll try and make this video as quickly as I possibly can um, because otherwise it'll just end up quite lengthy um, and what I might do is just show you how I do one string maybe try and give you a few tips and hints along the way and and then I'll, I'll perhaps I'll record the rest of the strings going on and off but I'll just speed it up so you can see me doing it in real time and if I need to slow anything down I'll you know I'll stop the camera and or, or I'll stop and I'll, I'll talk to you on the way so I had some Daddario Pro Art strings on um, I'm just about to do a violin review of them uh, sorry a string review of them so if I've done that at the time of releasing this then that will be in the description link um, directly underneath the video. I'm sorry you can't actually see me. So um, I'm taking the Pro Arts off and I'm putting on a set of Daddario Zyx um, strings to have a go at them and see what, what they're like. Once they're on I'll do a video review on those as well and I'll tell you all about those, how what I think about them, whether I like them or not, whether I'd have them again, whether I'd recommend them, who for and things and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm just going to take my Pro Arts off. I haven't actually had these Pro Arts on very long so what I will do is when I take them off I'll keep the every time I take a string off I'll just make a note of which string it is that I'm taking off um, and then I will what I'll do is I'll just put them back in the box and then if I have a problem later down the line and a string breaks or one of these or whatever I've still got a, a kind of a, a spare set of strings that I can use so the first thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to start with the E string so I'm going to take the E string off so I'll talk you through this one so what I'm going to do first of all is just loosen the peg now carefully slowly and don't rush this um, is the key to taking off strings a set of strings taking in, an entire set of strings off um, would probably take me something like I don't know 20 odd minutes to do it sort of properly without rushing it and without you know wanting to snap anything and that kind of thing so I'm just loosening the peg and as I'm doing that I'm just sort of I'm just pulling the string just so it doesn't get kind of caught up around here So I'm just loosening it until the string kind of comes out of the little hole in the peg. Okay, and then that's it. I'm just gonna remove it from, from the bottom. Okay, so that's in a safe position now. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the string out of the packet. So make sure you get the right, the right string for the right one. You don't wanna be putting on the wrong string. So, this one happens to be a loop end. I don't know if you can you can see that or not. Um, the other one I have was a ball end. So two two different types of strings. Um, you've got the loop and you've got the, the loop, which is the one on my right, and then you've got the ball end. It just depends what you've got on your violin here. This one will take either or. So um, the ball loop will just either hook, the ball will just hook in, or the loop will just simply loop over. So it just depends what kind of tuners you've got there, you, what tuners you've got at the end. If you're not too sure, just, just ask in the shop or you know ask the company, that kind of thing. So all I'm going to do to start with is to put the loop end over the tuner. What you will get on the E string is like a little kind of um, a little tube which is I don't know about about half a centimetre or so. What that does is that needs to go into the groove of the bridge and that just stops the E string cutting in because the unlike um, you know guitar strings if you're a guitar player you'll find the violin strings a lot thinner and a lot more delicate so um, it just it just goes into the bridge uh, just over there and I'm trying to do this whilst looking at the camera at the same time. So what I'll do then is just, I'll pull the string up, and then what I tend to do is, this is where the acrobatics come in with your hands, with my left thumb, I'll just sort of hold it here, and then what I'm basically just gonna try and do is just feed the loop, or feed the end through the peg. So once I've done that, Sorry if I'm just off camera a little bit. 
So you want to feed it through, I normally feed it through about, I don't know, a, a centimetre or so, so it's poking a centimetre out the other end, and then I'm going to wind it in. So what I'm doing all the time is with my left hand, my thumb is holding it taut as much as it can here, so it's not, so it's, it's staying kind of as, as tight as it possibly can over the bridge here. And then my other two fingers, my index and my fin middle finger, is holding the end of the coloured bit. So it's all of a bit of a, a loop that you've got there. And these two are just sort of going to hold it while I, I turn the peg round with my right hand. All the while, these two are pushing this string to the right hand side. When you're, when you're winding up the string, you want to make sure that the string is wound up as close to the side of the peg box as it is. So anything that's wound on this side, is close to this side anything that's wound that side is close to that side so if you hold it towards the peg as you're winding it up like I'm doing now then it will wind to the right so the reason why you have your thumb holding it here is because you know how much slack you've got there for the string just keep an eye out on what's happening down here at the bridge as well so you don't want to get too tight and then realize that the string has kind of popped out of place here, so to speak. So you'll eventually find that it will just kind of want to tighten in a little bit, which is exactly what I'm doing now. And then I'm just making sure that the little green, the little green thing is on the bridge here. All I'm going to do is just push it in gently and just tighten it up enough. I'm not even worried about tuning the string now. Um, I, I don't really care about that because there's no point tuning this up because by the time I take the rest of the strings off and put them on again then you know the whole, the whole tuning is going to be shot anyway. So that's it with, with that one. Just make sure it's sort of tight enough so that this it's sort of all, all sitting quite firmly and everything looks, everything looks good and there, there's no slack in there. So it sounds awful at the moment. So what I'm going to do in high speed is take off uh, the other strings and put the, the new strings on. But I am going to do it one string at a time. Folks, quick tip here, never take all of your strings off all at once. Just, just don't do it. If you do that, um, you could have a problem with the sound post inside the violin falling down because you've got no pressure against the bridge and the wood and the sound post. So if you take everything off, you imagine you've got absolutely no pressure on the violin at all. Sound post drops out and the violin is essentially useless. You've then got to go and pay someone to put it back in, or if you've got a student quality violin, it's it's not worth paying someone to put it back in. You might as well buy a new, buy a new violin. And I wouldn't recommend using it without the sound post. One, you're gonna get the most horrendous kind of, you wouldn't believe the kind of sound that, that you'd get. Some people think, oh, but it's only the sound post. Yeah, but it sounds, it really will sound quite hollow. You'll have no tone. You really won't, you'll cry. You really, that's happened to me once before on, on a violin that I had many years ago. Um, I cried when my sound post fell out. When I had it put back in professionally, I'm telling you, it just, it never went back the same. So, um, you know, we all learn from our mistakes and everything, but that was years. That was, that was many, many years ago when I was, you know, when I was very young and didn't know anything. So there we go, folks. So don't do that anyway. And without the sound post, because you're putting a lot of pressure on, on the bridge through the strings and then you're bowing on the, the strings and pushing them, there is a possibility that you could actually crack the violin as well. So don't do that. So I'm going to change the other strings one at a time um, and I'll, I'll speed it up for you. Okay, so I've just put all the strings on now. Um, none of them are in tune, they're just, um, they're fairly loose. So 
it sounds awful. So what I'm going to do now is tune the violin, G, D, A and E. I always start with the A string, then the D string, then the G string, and then go to the E string. Um, instead of tuning to an A, I actually tune the string to a B flat. I'll tell you why I do that in just a second, but I'm gonna tune everything up one. So the A is gonna be tuned to a B flat, the D is gonna be tuned to, or uh, sorry, the A is gonna be tuned to a B flat or an A sharp, ha however you wanna think of it, it doesn't really matter. The D is gonna be tuned to a D sharp, the G to a G sharp, and the E to an E sharp, or, or an F otherwise known as. So, um, so that's A on the piano. So it's quite far out. So this is the note that I'm gonna to tune to. So when I'm doing this, I'm always gonna be plucking the, the, the string with the thumb of my left hand whilst turning in the right hand so I know how far to turn. And I'm gonna be turning away from myself. So uh, clockwise, I suppose, if you wanna think of it like that. Every now and then when I'm, I'm turning the peg in notches, I'm gonna have a look, you'll see me do this, and that's where I'm just having a look to make sure that the bridge is standing upright. Sometimes with the cheaper violins, when you're tuning them, the bridge can pop out. That's because the, the, the feet of the bridge aren't sitting flat on the violin before it started, so therefore they just pop out. So sometimes you find that with cheaper violins. If that happens, just put the, the bridge directly back in, and where you wanna put the bridge is in the middle of the F holes. You get like the little kind of, when you're drawing an F, the, the line that you do in the middle of the F, the, the two little kind of lines there, that's where the bridge pretty much wants to line up to. That will be fine for, for, for a beginner or something. That's, so that, that's a place that you want to put it. So that'll be fine if you wanna just put it in the middle of where the little, where the little line is for the, for the F holes here. So I'm gonna tune to the B flat. So there we are, so we're at a B flat. So the D is gonna to go to a D sharp. I might speed this, this process up. I can see my bridge is slightly tipping over a little bit, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna gently pull it back. So the E is the one you want to be the most careful with because it's the most delicate string. So when I'm tuning, you can tell that each time I'm only just, I'm going up by a notch. I'm not, I know that when, when, I'm, when I'm plucking the string and I'm, I'm playing the note, no, on the piano. I know there's quite a way to go. It doesn't necessarily how no. It doesn't necessarily matter how much is 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 there. But you don't want to be just yanking the string round because that's exactly how you're going to break the string. So, like I said, the whole process. Um, this camera has now been rolling for about 20 minutes. A lot of that will be cut out anyway because I'll, I'll be speeding it up and cutting bits out that aren't relevant anyway. But this has actually taken me 20 minutes on the camera so far to do this. So that gives you a rough idea of how long it should be taking you to do it. If you're doing it in under 20 minutes, then you know, you're, you're either very lucky or you're gonna break something. Right, so we're pretty much tuned. Now, the reason why I tuned everything up a half a tone or a semitone is so that when you go around and tune the strings, 
they not everything else goes uh, they, they go a little bit flat so even though I've tuned the A if I tune the A to an A by the time I get to the D and the G and the E and back round to the A it's gonna have gone down maybe a tone or half a step or even maybe a full step or, or a tone for example by putting it up that extra notch more often than not if you're very lucky it actually drops it down from a B flat to an A from a D sharp to a D, from a G sharp to a G, and from an E sharp to an E, and then most of your strings are gonna be pretty well in tune, and then I won't really have to do too much with them. So let's, let's see if that's happened. So this is an A now. So it has dropped a little bit. It's dropped, a heart, it's dropped down to a G sharp by the sounds of it, but if I'd have put it down to an A, then it would have dropped even more, so. So every time I'm tuning this, I am gonna tune it slightly higher. So actually, that's pretty well. That's pretty well in tune. It's only, it's only just a little bit out. Again, I'm gonna push it a little bit higher. In fact, that's even a little bit too sharp. That's fine, I'm gonna leave it. And then the E. So that stayed as it was. So I'm gonna take it down a little bit. So now we have the D's a little bit sharp so I'll just take the D down and there we are and that didn't take very long to tune the strings at all so just a little tip there take everything up a half a step and then it just you know, it just makes your life a whole a whole lot easier so there we are so when you do put a new set of strings on folks um, unfortunately the most irritating thing about a new set of strings is that you will have to tune it every time you play the violin that means that might be every day or just every other day whenever you're playing it and you'll need to tune them like that for about or oh, anywhere between kind of I don't know two and four weeks depending on the string and obviously depending on how much you're tuning it and everything but yeah sorry if it's been a bit of a long video uh, but I hope it's been informative as well and this is just to prove to you this is exactly how I do it and that's it I'm done now as soon as I switch the video off then that's it so um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video